So Starbucks started in 1971. It was just a narrow little storefront in Seattle's Pike Place Market. It was really, even then, a pretty magical place. But in the 80s, something happened, and that is Howard Schultz joined the company in 1982. Starting in 1987, the logo went from brown to green, and the aprons did too. And you could get a cafe latte, a macchiato, an espresso, and not yet a frappuccino, but that would come later. Even after Starbucks became a coffee house, there was always that magical connection between Starbucks and the customer. So people could sit and stay, they could listen to music. It became a third place. Third place, a term first coined by sociologist Ray Oldenburg. It means the place where people spend time between work and home. And that experience was really what the world was looking for. And it started to grow in a way I don't think anybody could have imagined. Cafe Practices stands for Coffee and Farmer Equity, and it is our verification program that we have put into place uh, all around the globe over 25 years ago. So really early in the journey of thinking about sustainability and, and sustainable practices. We've put an emphasis on the social, the community, quality of coffee, uh, and transparency of pricing and build a holistic model. Farms that are part of Cafe Practices, which is, again, over 98% of farms that we source from are smallholder farmers, less than five hectares of coffee uh, that they're growing. And Cafe Practices as a foundation has allowed us to holistically work in ways that are bettering the lives of the farmers. Um, increasing the yields um, and doing it in a really responsible way from a sustainability practice. We've always been an innovative company. Coffee is no exception. To ensure we keep innovating is testing, piloting. Our research and development farm, Hacienda Alsacia in Costa Rica, is designed just for that. It is an innovation center. It is a hub for creativity, and uh, whether it be on farm, where we're doing things with soil, reducing water, using different equipment to ensure that we have proven to ourselves that these are great practices so that all farmers have access to it is critical. Also are embarking on what we're calling a sustainability innovation lab that's right there on the farm at Alsacia which is our next version of challenging ourselves to have that space and collaborate together to solve some of the biggest problems for, for the future of not just coffee, but the communities and the social and the environmental side of all the things that we do. So we're not stopping. So in 2008, our founder Howard Schultz went to a coffee store in New York, and he tasted what was the best cup of coffee. And that best cup of coffee was brewed on a machine called the Clover. And the Clover had a great following. The only thing was that the Clover was very slow. It would brew a cup of coffee in four minutes. So just imagine, you're sitting in your drive-through with four customers ordering a brewed cup on the Clover, it would take you 16 minutes. So what we did was we took the Clover technology and we repackaged it, re-engineered it, to brew a cup of coffee in 30 seconds. The thing I love about Vertica is it gives our customers choice. They can choose from one of many different coffees, and we can grind and brew that coffee fresh on demand in 30 seconds for every single customer. That means you're getting your choice of coffee, including decaf all day long. You're getting the highest quality cup, you're getting it fresh, every single customer, ground and brewed on demand. And actually a beautiful thing is it involves a lot less waste of both coffee and paper filters because we're brewing it on demand. Here she is. Obviously we've got blends from your dark roast, to your blonde roast, to even your medium roast. We've got a grande pike right here. It's essentially just two buttons that you press. You press the pike option and then you choose the size over here. Kind of just put your cup right there. 
press that button and we just wait for it to dispense. Innovation comes from a culture that is built around challenging the status quo. And challenging the status quo is the DNA of Starbucks. The best way to get to a great idea is to have a lot of ideas. But sometimes to work through all those ideas is very difficult. So the Trier Center is a place where we can bring a lot of ideas, fail fast, prototype, create ideas from scratch, test them out with our partners, test them out with our customers, and see which ones we should actually bring to market. So the way to think about Trier is, instead of someone sitting in the corporate office coming up with a solution, what we do is we engage with the 25 partners who are rotating through Trier. They solve the problem. They figure out how to solve the problem. And the rest of the building figures out how to make that solution happen. One of the things that's special about Starbucks is customers can find a drink that is truly just for them. My favorite Starbucks drink is a tall oat milk latte. I have to say it's a black coffee. It's a devil tall non-fat latte. My favorite is the ice shaken oat milk espresso. <laughs> the brown sugar oat milk shaken espresso, but with two extra pumps of white mocha in there. Makes it a little creamy, it's delicious. Venti iced soy uh, vanilla matcha, and I add salted cream cold foam on top. In the nearly infinite combination of drinks that customers can now get at Starbucks, one of the things that has really become popular over the last few years is cold foam. About five years ago, uh, our beverage team actually came up with the idea that you could have a very good texture like whipped cream, but it could be much more healthier by putting a cold foam topping on a beverage. And over the last five years, that cold foam topping has become the second largest customization that our customers do. But we needed to make it easier for our partners to be able to make cold foam. So we got some partners here and we were ideating with them. And they came up with the idea. They said, hey, is there something that we can make cold foam on? We can use anywhere in the store and move it around. And they said, what if we could make this with a new kind of blender? So we came up with a battery powered blender and this is the first battery powered blender in the industry. The thing I love about it is that it makes our partners' lives easier because it's portable. They don't have to stay in one place while something is blending. Now let's take you over to our portable cold foam blender. I've got a salted cream cold foam over here. Let's quickly make it. And there you are, salted cream cold brew made with a portable cold foam blender. So everything about it is based on the partner needs and that was all done in the Trier Center. So between ease of use, less waste, and more efficient for our partners and customers, we love the portable cold foam. How do you measure innovation in Starbucks, right? Uh, one way of measuring it is uh, the new products we put out and the, what the customers like, right? The other way of looking at it is, and that is a tangible way, if it is really novel, you should be able to get a patent on it. So we get roughly about 50 to 55 patents in a year. Okay, and about uh, six years ago, we were doing about five to six patents a year. So if you measure Starbucks innovation, and this is, you can go to the patent office website and you can Google Starbucks and you'll find all the patent filings. So our innovation has gone up 10 times since Trier was set up. So everyone asks me, how do you know that uh, innovation has gone up since Trier was set up? Go look at the patents. And that's why I put up the patent wall. And the patents are the, embodiment of that. It is living proof that we are innovating and we are much better than everyone else in the industry. At Starbucks, we see an increasing premium on genuine human connection. We have always been a company that's been in the people business serving coffee, not just in the coffee business serving people. And that's really at the heart of it. And I think even as the world changes, even as Starbucks change, as long as we keep that in mind, 
it's it's going to be special and it's going to be something that will endure even if it's one cup at a time or one conversation at a time we want to bring human connection into the world at scale